we'd like to spend a few minutes telling you about the J programming language and showing you how powerful and simple it is. So what is J exactly? It is a programming language, but there's a lot more to it than that. It's also a high-performance development environment. It's high-performance in two ways, the speed with which J handles lots of data and how quickly we can write programs with it. Some of this speed comes from J's powerful, generalized handling of arrays of data in a simple, consistent manner. Its compact notation lends itself well to thinking about problems computationally. J runs on numerous platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. Also, J is open source. J offers four interactive development environments. The simplest, the console, works well within a text-based environment like Emacs. JHS uses a web browser as the front end and is good for integrating code with graphics. The QJ IDE is another environment that can also act as a web browser. Finally, the QT IDE provides a windowing based on the QT graphics engine. We'll use J to solve the first problem from projecteuler.com. Here, we see an interactive J session in which we are entering comments, the indented lines beginning with capital NB dot, to describe the problem we want to solve using J. The problem is this. If we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9, the sum of which is 23. Apply the same logic to find the sum of all multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. First, we see how to create a vector of the integers less than 1,000 using i dot. J's response or input of i dot 1,000 immediately follows flush against the left margin. The second step shows how the bar symbol with the left argument of 5 returns the 5 modulus of this entire vector. Next, we use element of or e dot with the left argument of 0 on this result to find all the places where the 5 modulus is 0. This gives us a boolean with the 1 where the modulus is 0, the even multiples of 5, and 0 is everywhere else. We then do the same thing modulo 3 to give us a vector with 1's corresponding to the even multiples of 3. We combine the expressions for these two booleans together with OR, or plus dot, to get a vector with 1's corresponding to each multiple of 3 or 5 and zeros everywhere else. If we multiply this final boolean by the original vector of numbers, the boolean zeros zero out the numbers that are not multiples of 3 or 5, whereas the boolean 1's preserve the numbers that are even multiples of 3 or 5. So, when we add up the elements of this product using plus insert or plus slash, only the multiples in which we are interested contribute to the resulting sum. All the non-multiples of 3 or 5 add only zeros. The result of this sum is the answer of 233,168. Once we have this piece of code that works, we can simplify it by combining common elements of its pieces. Instead of taking the 3 and 5 modulus separately, we can do them at the same time for a more compact, generalized solution. This also shows us that there are many ways to reach a solution in J for a given problem. Looking at another Project Euler problem in the same fashion, first we enter the problem statement as a series of comments, then we'll look at the successive steps for solving it. The problem is to find the sum of the digits of a large number that is the product of consecutive integers, a factorial. The bang sign or exclamation point gives us factorial as much as we're used to in conventional mathematics. We see that factorial 100 bang 100 is approximately 9 times 10 to the 157th power, expressed here as a floating point number. However, since this form does not show us all the digits in the product, we generate the factorial using 100 with an x at the end to specify 100 as an extended precision number so that the factorial is also extended precision, showing us all the digits. We convert this long number to a string representation using format, or double quote colon, 
The result looks the same on the display, but is a character string rather than a number. We then apply the inverse operation of number to character, that is, character to number, to each digit in the string to give us a vector of single digit numbers corresponding to the digits in the decimal expansion of factorial 100. As in the previous problem, we add up this vector using plus insert, which inserts a plus between each element of the vector, giving us the sum. However, here too there are alternate ways to perform some of these steps. For instance, we could convert the digits of the string into a numeric vector by looking each one up using the index function i dot in a vector of the decimal digits in ascending order, then summing this as we did before. This is faster in terms of CPU usage, though the difference may not be noticeable without precisely timing it. Another alternative converts the factorial directly to a vector of its individual digits without the intermediate step of converting the larger number to a character vector, as we did in the earlier example. We can choose one of these solutions and assigning the result to the variable e20, avoiding the display of the answer until we look at the result of the variable by entering its name on the command line. Looking toward a more general problem space than Project Euler, we outline a problem called the Colatz Conjecture, which starts by defining a process, rules to apply to the natural numbers. The process is stated in the comments. We divide any even number by 2, but we multiply any odd number by 3 and add 1 to the result. We continue applying this rule to the result of the previous step until we reach the value 1. The Collatz conjecture states that the process will eventually lead to a result of 1, no matter what natural number we take as our starting point. To implement the process, we write j expressions for each of the separate parts of it. So, we will write an expression for dividing a number by 2, and another expression for adding 1 to 3 times a number. We also come up with an evenness test using the two modulus of the number to determine if it is odd or even. Even numbers have a two modulus of 0, odd ones have a two modulus of 1. We combine these separate j phrases using the at sign dot or agenda conjunction to select one or the other of the two steps depending on the result of the evenness test. The alternate steps are tied together along with the evenness test, and we assign the name Colatz1 to the, co the combination of these functions. We then test it on a single value to ensure that it behaves as we expect. Next, we'll see how we can apply Colatz1 repeatedly until we reach the value 1. We define a multi-line function, which we'll name colon1. We have a local variable ret in this function into which we'll accumulate our results. We initialize this to the input value given by the variable y. To accumulate results, we'll use a while loop that looks similar to one you see in many programming languages. In the body of the loop, we apply our colats1 verb to the current value of our number until we satisfy the condition of reaching the value 1, at which point we exit the loop and return the vector ret as a result of our col1. We test this new verb with the argument of 20 to verify that it gives us the expected result. However, as we've already seen, there are generally alternate ways to do something in J. Our alternative is to define the verb colats2 in a slightly different fashion than we defined colats1. This new version builds the vector of intermediate results by putting each new value at the end of the existing vector. Like our earlier version, this embodies the logic we'll embed in a loop as part of another program. However, this time we build the vector of results within this function, not externally to it in a while loop as we did previously. The major difference, however, will be how we embed this in a loop using a j-conjunction rather than the while loop we used in the previous version. First, however, we test the core functionality of Colette's 2 by manually building the series as if we are in a loop starting with 20 as before. Using this new vector version, we perform each successive step, showing how each new result is appended to the end of the vector with each iteration. We see how the vector continues to grow with each iteration applied to the previous result. Next, we implement an equivalent of the while loop in a more J-like fashion using the power conjunction, hat colon. This conjunction applies the phrase on its left according to the condition or count specified on its right. In this example, we'll use power twice on the left with the condition to check if we reach our one value, then again on the right with the value of infinity represented by underscore. 
Applying the entire phrase on the left infinitely many times means to continue applying it until the answer stops changing. This we assign the name colon 2 and test with the value 20 for which we manually worked out the sequence above. We see that the result is what we expect, so we try it with a larger value giving a much longer series, which we then plot to see it. This shows us a larger than a smaller set of sawtooth pipe peaks as the value eventually reaches 1. This concludes our initial introduction to the J language. We hope you're intrigued. If you are, you can find out more by starting at jsoftware.com.